In this lesson, we're going to focus on clouds, how they form, what types of clouds we see in the sky, and what those different types of clouds mean for our weather right now and to come. Let's start with the basics. How do you get a cloud to form? You might remember the water cycle. It's one of the first things usually that we learn in weather, but let me give you a refresher just in case you want to learn a little bit more, refresh your memory. All right, so you have the sun that heats the ground. That can create evaporation from ponds, lakes, streams. That water vapor then rises and remember, temperatures cool as you climb in the atmosphere. So as that vapor starts to cool, it condenses into water droplets that can generate a cloud. That's the key component that you need. Sun warming the land and creating evaporation and rising air to take that water vapor up, forming the cloud as it condenses. And then, of course, you get precipitation that falls out of the cloud. We'll get to the precipitation part in our next lesson, but let's stop with the condensation part where you get the cloud to form. So once you have the condensation and you have clouds forming, there are a bunch of different clouds that you can see in the sky. Let's start, in this case, with cirrus clouds. At the top of this chart here, they're high, they're wispy. In fact, they're so high in the atmosphere, they're made entirely of ice crystals. When you see these, you very often know that there's a change coming in our weather in the next two to three days. So if you see a cirrus cloud, it's usually coming ahead of a front or a storm or something that's going to result in a noticeable change in our weather. Even if you don't know what that change is, you know something's about to change. The other thing I want to focus on also at the top of the chart here, contrails. You see that on the other side of the screen. Contrails are basically man-made clouds. They form behind airplanes. Not every plane is going to create a contrail every time it flies through the sky. Essentially what happens is you have a plane that flies through the sky. It's got some exhaust coming from behind it. If the temperature and the moisture content in the atmosphere is just right, you can get the contrail to form. There's actually been some interesting research showing how all the planes flying through the sky creating these contrails can actually contribute to climate change, warming up the world a little bit more. Okay, that takes care of the clouds that are really high in the sky. Now let's move down in the atmosphere to the cumulus cloud. This is one of the basic ones. They look like little cotton balls in the sky, puffy, fair weather clouds. Usually they're just kind of like those Homer Simpson type clouds that you see in all the cartoons. Usually you just get okay weather with those forming in the heating of the day, if you will. So you might start with a beautiful sunny day, and remember, as the sun heats things up, the air starts to rise, and you generate those puffy clouds. So don't usually worry if you see the cumulus clouds. They're more decoration than anything else. What about these stratus clouds that you see also in the middle part of the chart? Those are kind of the low clouds, and very honestly, you can't even tell that they're separate clouds. If you look up at the sky with stratus overhead, it looks like just one big blanket of gray. This is what you get on a rainy day. So whereas the cumulus clouds, you can see the individual clouds kind of looking like shapes in some cases. The stratus cloud is just one big blanket. It usually happens when it rains, it snows, something like that. Of course, if you have fog, it's basically just a cloud on the ground. So it means the temperature of the air matches the dew point, the moisture, if you will. When it's so saturated in the air, you can get that cloud right on the ground. So if it's a foggy day, you're living in the cloud. The last one I want to talk about on this chart is the biggest. This is the big daddy of all of them. Cumulonimbus clouds. It's also a little hard to say for kids in some cases. But the cumulonimbus cloud can go 40, 50, 60,000 feet high in the sky, and this is where you get your thunder, your lightning, your hail, your tornadoes. This is where the real storminess happens. Coming up in our next lesson, we're going to talk more about the precipitation that comes out of all of these clouds.